how much they are saving so you have studied that america is consumer economy in which people they don't want to save they just want to spend it that's it how they invest their savings some people some individual individualistic countries or some uh, collectivist countries those who want to remain or connected to the family they don't they you know they don't want to spend their life alone as individual person they live in family oriented people mostly they save but whether they are investing their savings in stock market in somewhere else right you need to see the behavior how people interact with one another whether they see the price and go or whether they actually negotiate the price in some countries even though they have written that okay this is 9.5 yen and you go to the seller i want to pay 8 okay deal is done but in some countries 9.5 mean 9.5 the price is 9.5 yen you want to buy if you don't if you don't want to buy please go to the next shop so you need to see the behavior so those who study all these we call this economic uh, economist okay now the very important question why to study economics a general answer going to be because i want to graduate but really why you want to study economics okay you want to pass 40% is in your hand all you need to do work for only 20% that's it but why you want why this degree include economics the question should be because you are here to study and want to graduate but why the cip bachelor's of international trade or other you know <laughs> degree have included economics microeconomics or why you are supposed to study the economics number 1 it gives you a new way of thinking right because sometimes we are thinking in a very lay man approach that's it very ordinarily approach we are thinking sometimes we need to understand the society what's going on it especially happens when you have a cross cultural experience even if your own country if you go to the north part of the country the culture is totally different their their economics is totally different right number 3 understand global affairs i will talk about this in our coming slide and to be informed citizen let's talk about global affairs why there is need to understand the global affairs so you have mobile phone right have you gone through a single day in which you do not have seen any economic story any economic news any event something now there is not even possible even if you are using internet google a menu pop up or something else you know inflation is rising food prices is rising who is going to be elected what happened to the policy right what what i would do after this graduation should i choose this job or this job or this job to understand global affairs right now this is technological trend you should join a technology company over there wages are quite high right if you don't understand the global affairs then of course then you know it is i would say that it's not even possible nowadays you go through a single day without any global affairs right news are filled with economics yeah you know with, with economic news plus politicians place economic well being of their citizens 
uh, citizens made the top priority in their list. How many jobs are going to be offered? If I going to be elected? Or the government have a new plan? New budget is coming. New policies are coming. Right to cope up inflation or something. <coughs> Plus nowadays, the government's priority is to narrow the gap between rich and poor. So it's not even possible for even a single day that we have not gone through any news regarding economics. Right? The last one is to be an informed citizen. <coughs> economics, you want to pursue your career in, in economics, you are just here to pass the course or to get the degree. Even then, the economics is not going to leave you for the rest of your life. Why? Because you are required to better understand the economic policy. What will happen if government increases the taxation? What will happen to my business? What, are, what will happen to my salary? How much salary I would receive? I have planned to buy, you know, to buy a house in five years. The government increases the taxes. If I buy a house in five years, how, many, how much I have to save? You're all, you know, thinking of a change with this economic news. So, like it or not, the economics is not going to leave even after you graduate from Tsonghuan University. Right? Last is effects of free trade. The famous WTO war between America and China. If you do not send goods, if you send goods in, in our country, I will tariff you. I will tariff you. I will tariff you. Right? So, blessing economics. No one is leaving or, or you know, leaving this earth without economics. Right? So like it or not, this is essential part, even if you know your degree and even if you're thinking, because economics is gonna give you a new way of thinking. Right? So time to time with concept to concept, I would be giving you fruitful thoughts regarding your own business, managing your own business, and how it will help to run your own business. Now, the principles of economics, so we have 10 principles. So these four principles in which we talk about only individual person, people face trade off, the cost of something is what you give up to get it. Rational people think at margin, people respond to incentives. So these four principles, they are called principles of individual decision making, right? in which we address people. We saw the people behavior. We'll talk about one by one. Okay? So these four principles, we call this principles of individual decision making. So that will be the focus of microeconomics. So the rest of the three, five, six, and seven, in which trade can make things better off, in which people interact with one another, with one another. Because trade, trade only happens when buyers and sellers meet with each other, right? Markets are usually good way and governments sometimes improve market activity. So these are called principles of how people interact. And the last three, one, eight, nine, and ten, they are they belong to macroeconomics, macro. In which we talk about the standard of living, we talk about Prices rise, inflation, unemployment, right? We call this principles of how economy works as a whole, or how as a whole economics works, right? So let's talk about one by one. Number one, people face trade off. People face trade off, which means. Uh, Mm 
that is much more good. Okay. So people face trade off, which means to get one thing, you usually have to give up another. So some of the students who are from Shanghai, they are giving up their seat to attend this lecture. <coughs> Some of you are doing jobs, so you took the time off okay. to attend this lecture. Some of you want to have a family dinner or want to pursue a hobby or something, right? But instead, you are choosing to come to this class. Why? I'm going to ask you because it's cold. mute your microphone, Nicola. 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 Okay. Okay, now, for example, students decide between time, study, and job, and family income spending decisions between vacations, children education, clothing, and saving. Right? Whether parents should save money for their children or spend on their education or spend on their uh, on their vacation, clothing, how they manage this kind of decision. So it means people face trade off. The other name of this principle is there is no free lunch. Everything has a cost. There is no free lunch. So, a famous example is guns and butter. Number one, so guns and butter basically the famous terminology that we use. Uh, most in mostly we use in in government level in policy making. So in which, if we spend more on guns, on ammunition, on defense purposes, so our standard of living going to be decreased. If we spend less on guns, so we will have more money for butter or more on living standard. So if you spend more on defense. You have little money for your living standard. If you spend less on defense budgets, you have more money for the people to increase their living standard. Similarly, the clean environment versus high level of goods. So this environmental problem is very highlighted during the last two or three years. And now it is peaked. Every country, even United States, United Nations, Germany, China, everybody is talking about the environmental impact. So look at that. If you are producing clean environment, goods, right? You are protecting the 